Hey guys, Richard Holden here. Welcome to the channel. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. You can see we have a 1985 Dodge Omni GLH, at least for now, because we're turning it into a GLHS by taking this motor and putting it in this car. But before we do that, we have to build the motor. And yes, I know it's already built, but you guys get to see how we built it, what went into it, and then hopefully we're gonna put it in that car and drive it around, but that won't be for the next video. I thought that's how we surfaced the deck. Yeah, it has a new surface. Well, that's where we left those pins on. All right, there's an oil restrictor that we gotta make sure we put in. So we've taken apart a bunch of motors because we're looking for something to go in there <laughs> to make the Omni whole again. We're looking for different cranks. Found some. Definitely got some grooves on them. Looking for rod and piston combinations. We want T2 stuff. This one was actually one that had just gone together. It's going to be rebuilt. Found a couple of scratches down here. You can kind of see... Other piston assemblies. All right, here's how you fix, you know, crankshaft. A little scuffed up. We're gonna machine it. This. This one, you saw that we. Super Richie razor blade rebuild on it with the uh, yeah machine shop. Look at that! It's like all minty fresh. Stone broke off of the thing. Yeah. Went flying and threw the whole fucking thing across. Gotta orient it right. It's got valve reliefs, also has an arrow to tell you where the front is. So I can slide this in. We've made sure to put lubrication on the walls and on the piston and on our tool. We've oriented the rings properly. Get this thing lined up. Boom! And then in this case, the crank is down. Got my finger down here, even though we have guides on it. So after installing the piston, you can see we pushed it all the way down against the crankshaft, put our new bearings in. 
take off our little protectors, our little booties. See that this side has the tang on it. Tang for the bearing. We'll take this one, has a tang on it. Those go on the same side. We already have oil on the bearing. Put that cap over. Push that down. Try to do everything here. Put our nuts on. So now tighten those down and then torque all the rod bolts. So I like to alternate between sides. Make sure that the cap goes down squarely here. So what I like to do is get the cap snug down. Now you can feel that you're pulling the rod bolt back in place. So once that's tight, and I go over, drop my socket, put my new socket on, 13 millimeter, go over to our crank bolt, and I like to spin this baby around, try to feel how much drag it has. Now we've got some ring drag, obviously. So what I like to do is I'll test and make sure, I just want to check and see how the crank spins by itself and then how it spins when I install each piston and see if we get, you know, incremental drag with each one to make sure that one of them isn't holding things up and causing a problem. We first checked and then reinstalled the factory oil pump, followed by the oil pump pickup. Then topped it off with a freshly painted oil pan. Brian from the car farm installed the front cover and oil pump seal followed by the water pump. We then installed the crank pulley and the oil pump drive pulley. Then we took a look at head gasket sealing. Okay, putting studs in, cause this 2.2 liter T2 is gonna be a stud. So we're putting studs in, see here. Got a little Allen wrench, cause see the, Top so we've got little Allen's provisions. Zing that in. Oh. Obviously, you can also do this with a gun. They don't have to be torqued. You don't need to torque them in. The torquing comes after we put them in. So we'll get all these guys in, and then we'll be able to put our cylinder head on. They are way different. Way different heights. So we got our head studs in. Ready for the head gasket. Okay, what are we working on over here? I see two one-piece intake manifolds. Oh, that's yeah, a two-piece. One, piece one and two. I'm trying to figure Uno out. Dos. EGR. I'm figuring out if the EGR will fit. So we have a different... It looks like the throttle body's in a different position on the, I don't know if the, it's... I don't know. If... Oh, okay. Oh, this is just index different. Uh -huh. but, but this is the same. This throttle body we just okay. grabbed. No, I'm not that. I'm just looking at the angle. Of the, I'm oh, looking at the angle of oh, my relative like to this here. one, but I, maybe the intake manifold was just like not aimed the same. Yeah. Well, the the point of this experiment right now was the height check. It's yeah. If our if our pipe. But this guy's. Whoop. Oh yeah, they're so, those are definitely different, huh? Yeah, but one's north south. Well, it, one's, we don't know if it matters or not yet, guys. So yeah. Need to loosen that. Yeah. Caddy wampus. Yeah, so. So this is very cool. Found this little guy. Here, come here. Come over here, you gotta cooperate. Found this little guy crawling through the shop, wanting to say hi. I told the guys from the car farm, I'm gonna catch a snake while I'm here. And sure enough, this is awesome. So this is an Omni GLH like mine, and mine's an 85. This is a T1 car, and this is what they look like. <laughs> from the factory. This one is so nice. Maybe the nicest one around. Look at that thing. What, although they never said Shelby on it, but that's a really cool touch. Look at that. 
So if I had a T1, I would want it to look like this. I've got T1 envy. Super cool. Okay guys, there you have it. We have officially assembled our 2.2 liter turbo T2 short block. The only thing remaining now and what's coming up in part two is we need to find a suitable 782 cylinder head, apply a Super Richie razor blade rebuild on that cylinder head. We need to grab a factory T2 camshaft, a factory two-piece intake manifold, and obviously the factory turbo combination, the turbocharger and the exhaust manifold, get that stuff all together, get the cam on, get that lined up, get everything together, so then in part three, we can attach it to the transmission, hook up all the lines, get it in the car, and get it running. Thanks for watching. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.